Okay guys, today we're checking out this Focusrite Scarlett Solo USB audio interface for Windows and Mac computers. It's a fairly new product, it's only appeared in shops recently and it retails at a typical street price of just 79 British pounds, including 20% VAT tax. So it's right down there in budget price territory. If you don't know the company Focusrite, they've got a reputation for making really good quality mic preamps. So what you get with the Scarlett Solo, assuming it lives up to the hype, is a high quality Focusrite mic preamp at a super low price, all bundled up in a really small, compact and portable little unit, as you'll see when we get it out of the box. OK, now Focusrite didn't give this to me to review, I bought it to go with these two Macs. That's a brand new iMac latest model and a brand new MacBook Air latest model. Now my go-to audio interface, against which I measure all other budget audio interfaces, is the Apogee Duet. This is really high quality, but this is a Mark I Duet, it's Firewire only. These Macs don't have Firewire, they've only got USB or Thunderbolt. So I needed a USB audio interface that would work with both the Macs. And the Scarlett Solo ticked all the boxes. For use with the desktop, it's small, compact, won't get in the way, and I only need a single mic input. But the thing that really sold it to me was its compatibility for use on the road with the laptop. It's really small and compact. But the thing that kind of sealed the deal for me is the fact that the Scarlett Solo delivers a full 48 volts of phantom power to the Mic Pre without using an external wall wart power supply. Apparently you just plug it in with USB and you get a full 48 volts at the mic input. So that sealed the deal. And as part of the review, we're going to be checking out that 48 volt phantom power. I'm interested to see whether you get the full 48 volts if the laptop's running on batteries, or whether you can only get the full 48 volts when the laptop's plugged into the mains. But we'll check that out as part of the review. OK, let's just go through the specs. This is a two input, two output device. Input one is the mic preamp. There's only a single mic input, that's input one. Input two is a quarter inch line input. But you can switch this input to instrument mode, in which case it becomes like a high gain input suitable for plugging in electric guitars and basses so you can feed them direct into your amp modelling software. Otherwise you switch input 2 to line and you get a standard line level for keyboards etc. The maximum recording rate for the Scarlett Solo is 2496 but we'll check out the other rates it does in the review. The other thing is both on the box and in the, um, on the website it says you can only use the Scarlett Solo with Windows 7 or 8 and only with Mac OS X, Mountain Lion or Mavericks. But in the review I'm going to quickly try it with Snow Leopard as well just to see if it works because there's quite a few people out there with slightly older Macs which have got the older 32-bit EFI and they can't install Mountain Lion or Mavericks so I'm going to give it a quick go with Snow Leopard to see if it works. And other than that you get a whole bunch of included free software um, it's not in the box, there's a code in the box to download all the software. But you get a free copy of Ableton Live Lite. You get the suite of the Focusrite Scarlet plugins. There they are on the back. We'll be checking those out quickly in the review as well. You get an EQ, a gate, a compressor and a reverb plugin. The basic stuff you need to get making music. You also get 16 gigabytes of Loopmaster samples, which we'll also quickly check out to see if they're any good. And you also get a free copy of the Novation Base Station plug-in synth, and this is a really good little synth. So even if you don't have any software, you get a, everything you need to get going making music included. Inside the box, you've got the unit itself, and a USB lead, and that's your lot. Okay. And there she is. Yeah. Dinky, isn't it? It's a, a metal case, some sort of brushed steel. Nice, really small. To give you an idea of the size, there's a Motorola Moto G phone. I mean, this thing really is small and compact. Um, and out of the back. You've got USB connection, RCA left, right out, and there's a Kensington lock. Oh, and by the way, full marks 
to Focusrite for adding nice big rubber feet. Line 6 could take a lesson from Focusrite um, because when you put it on the desktop it's nice and firm and stuck there. You know, if the mic lead's plugged in and you accidentally knock the lead, this thing isn't going to go flying off the desk. I got really badly attacked for criticising the Line 6 Pocket Pod because it didn't have any rubber feet at all and you have to put little bits of blue tack under it. But I mean, seriously, manufacturers, <laughs> you know, nice big rubber feet like this means that when you put your little desktop unit on a desktop, if the cable connecting to it accidentally gets knocked, the thing isn't going to go and fly off the top onto the floor and break. There it is. Okay, so let's get it um, plugged in. Let's plug the USB lead into the back and the lights come on like that. Be careful to make sure the 48 volt phantom switch is not switched on before you plug your mic in. It was actually on out of the box, depressed. Okay. And the only light that's on at the moment is the little USB light. Okay, let's get a mic plugged in. Nothing's popped up on the iMac by the way. Okay, let's plug in a mic. In she goes. This is a phantom power mic, so switch on the phantom power switch. Like that. Let's turn it up. Let me just talk into this mic over here. Come here, mic. One, two, one, two, three, four. So you get that LED ring around both of the inputs, uh, which gives you uh, your signal level. If it's green, one, two, three, four, then you've got a, a decent level, but if it's too high, one, two, it goes red and you're overloading the input. Okay, that's quite dinky, isn't it? Okay, there's Logic's audio preferences at the moment. There's the built-in input, microphone and output from the iMac. So let's input device, Scarlett Solo USB, Output device, Scarlett Solo USB, buffer size, let's put it the lowest, 32 samples, and apply changes. Initialising core audio, right there she is. Okay, I'll just get some headphones plugged in and we'll try that out. Okay, well I've got it plugged in, um, with the mic connected and everything. Down there. Okay, and um, well, the first thing is the headphone socket gives a nice hot level. I don't like headphone so um, outputs to be too quiet, but just running the Ultra Beat with the headphone up full, it's nice and loud. And um, I'm, I've got the audio input with the input monitor on, and I'm getting a really nice, very clean, very clear vocal, I must say. And this is only using a budget. Chinese condenser mic, but it sounds pretty damn good. Very crisp and smooth. That's nice, very nice. Sounds okay, let me just try and get a bit of audio down there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm not the best singer. Let's just hear that back. Oh, that sounds really nice, even with the grotty singing. And no cracks or pops or anything like that. So, yeah, seems to be okay. That's with the iMac. Okay, next with the MacBook Air. This is just running off batteries at the moment. Um, so let's set it up. Scarlet Solo USB. Scarlet Solo USB. I'm going to put it at the lowest latency, 32 samples, or lowest buffer size. My changes. It will pop, pop, pop there as it changes and resets. Okay, let's start with a new project. So now, will the phantom power work? Remember, this is not plugged into the mains. So, phantom power. 
Oh my god. Let's turn it up a bit. One, two! Yeah, no, it's working. Um, let's put the input monitor on. Let's put a preset on that voice channel. One, two! Oh my god, yeah, that's beautiful. Come here, Mike. I got many rivers to cross. As I said, I'm not a singer. But I can't find my way home. No, no. Wow, that sounds really crisp. And we can confirm that you get the full 48 volts phantom power when the laptop is not plugged in to the mains. Fantastic. And it sounds really crisp. Fantastic. OK, that's that. OK, and now I've got a guitar plugged into the line input and I've got the switch set to the high gain instrument setting. Got the old guitar plugged in. It's got uh, Seymour Duncan pickups. They're not really hot ones. And that's running into an audio track uh, with the amp modelling rig set up in Logic and it's using the Crunch Guitar uh, amp switcher preset. And um, I've got to tell you, it really sounds like a real amp. I'm not a, you know... I'm not a great guitarist or anything. But it really, really, really sounds good. Okay, and now the different sample rates that the Scarlet Solo can do. Um, this is the sample rate drop-down list in Logic's project settings panel. And there you can see the possible rates are 44.1, 48, 88.2 and 96k. And I've tried recording at each of these rates and everything works fine. Alright, so that's that. OK, so does the Scarlet Solo work with Snow Leopard? Um, there's the Scarlet Solo plugged into the Mac Pro. The Phantom Power's working and everything. That's the Mac Pro screen and it's booted into Snow Leopard. I've got Logic 9 running. And if we look at the audio settings, there's the Scarlet Solo USB set as the input and output device. I've got it set to an in-out buffer size of 32 samples. And then if we look at the project audio settings there, and there's the possible sample rates. You can see 44.1, 48, 88.2 and 96. Okay, and um, it all seems to be working fine. I recorded a couple of tracks of audio at 44.1 at the moment it's set to. Everything seems fine. Playback's fine. Recording's fine. It all seems okay. So we'll say that it works with the Snow Leopard, um, but I will do some more extensive tests. And if there's any problems, I'll I'll, I'll add you know some notes. But it seems to be fine. So that's that. OK, and now on to the summing up. Well, let's begin with the included software. The star of the show is the Scarlet plugin suite that's included free. I mean, they are superb little plugins. And they're actually sold in their own right as a separate product. Um, so because of that, I've decided to do a separate mini review for the Scarlet plugin suite, and it'll, it'll be on our channel. And there'll be a link below to that review so you can check them out properly. They are great plugins. And I'm amazed, frankly, that they're included in the price of the Scarlet Solo. Um, but there you go. The Base Station Synth plugin, well, there's plenty of audio examples and video um, uh, reviews of it out there for you to check out, so I don't need to talk about that. The Loop Master Sample Collection, well, it's like a little mini taster selection showing off the Loop Master's company product. So you get a little bit of everything. Reggae, drum and bass, different types of house, EDM, Latin, hip hop, trap, drum and bass, you know, a little bit of everything. And each mini collection includes drum loops, bass loops, music loops and transitions or fills. So it's a nice little freebie, yeah? And now onto the unit itself. Well, what can you say? £79. It's a fantastic little mic pre. Um, I've used this for several days with a typical budget condenser mic, the kind of mic most people would have 
who might buy the Scarlet Solo. And I honestly can't really tell the difference between the Scarlet Solo and the Apogee Duet costing four times as much. It's a great little mic pre. Uh, and, and as we've seen, perfect views with the laptop, you know, 48 volts from without a power supply and even when the laptop's running from batteries. Um, the instrument input is another fantastic addition. It's so simple, just switch to instrument, plug your guitar or bass in, straight into your amp modeling software and the sound is superb you know easily good enough for demo work or even product depending on how featured the instrument is you know okay now it's all good but there is a downside and this is not a particular criticism of the scarlet solo this is a criticism of most budget audio interfaces focusrite have not included any way to turn the speaker output off so if you've got your speakers plugged into the rca outputs on the back and you're recording you've got to turn your speakers off before you begin to record because you don't want the sound coming out the speakers it'll get on the mic and ruin your recording or worse you could go into record mode with the speakers turned up really loud and get a horrendous feedback loop that could potentially destroy your speakers um, you know as I said it's not a particular criticism of this product because it's common to a lot of audio interfaces but given Focusrite's long experience in the professional recording industry I am a bit surprised they haven't included any way to defeat the speakers. A simple switch on the front, I'm sure, wouldn't have um, increased the price of the unit that much. Perhaps it's something they can think about for the uh, for the um, Scarlet Solo Mark II or whatever. But the bottom line is, you know, you've got to continually turn your speakers off every time you want to record and then if you're the kind of person who likes to listen back on speakers to what you've recorded you then have to turn them back on again to listen to playback and over a long day of recording continually turning the speakers off record turn them back on to the playback turn them off to record turn them back on to playback it can become a chore but you know as I said it's this is common to a lot of audio interfaces um, but leaving that aside in summing up um, I'd say, well, I don't often give a 10 out of 10 for a product, but uh, in the case of this Scarlet Solo, to quote a famous film, this one goes to 11.